Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of DeLorean Tech and today we're going to do a review video on the new iDisplay acrylic display case for the Mark II DeLorean Time Machine from Hot Toys. If you've seen my previous iDisplay review videos for the Mark I and Eagle Moss DeLoreans, you'll know why I went with this one for my Mark II. That said, I was a little disappointed when I discovered I couldn't display my Mark II with the doors open in this display case. You can only display it with one of the doors open, the driver's side door. There's not enough height to the case to allow you to display the model with both doors open. But then I came up with a solution. So there is a way to do it, you just need to set up the stand a bit differently. If you're interested in displaying your model like this, go ahead and check out my other video that details this non-invasive, easy to do display stand mod. Now one of the questions that we had was whether or not the display case for the Mark I was going to fit the Mark II in hover mode. Unfortunately, the answer is no, and that's why I display it developed this new case. The Mark I case is also not high enough to display the model in this configuration with the doors up and the modified stand. This case is clearly larger than the Mark I case with dimensions at 31 inches across by 19 inches high and 19 inches deep. I think another issue I had was I just wish the case was a little bit wider here like the Mark I case. I feel a little bit of room in the front and the rear of the car would have improved the aesthetic. Definitely not a deal breaker for me, but it's definitely something I would have preferred. Overall, the display case assembles just like the Mark I. It just has a few more screws due to the added height. So without further ado, let's get into the assembly video. So first things first, you wanna open this box up within 24 hours of delivery to make sure there's nothing broken because I display it does require that in order to file a claim for damages. So flip it over. It does come with a series of detailed instructions in order to put this thing together. It also has a hardware bag that has the screws and the screw fittings that you'll need to install to put this whole thing together. So you're gonna to wanna to quickly go through the different pieces to make sure they're all there. So you're gonna have two of these end pieces. These are identical. And then you're gonna have two of these front and back pieces. These are also identical. And then you're gonna have a top, which is this piece here, and then your base piece, which is black. You can also choose to go with a white base if you want. I just chose black just to match the rest of. And also, I think it actually looks a lot better with the DeLorean against a black background. So the hardware bag consists of two bags of four fittings and screws and two bags of six fittings and screws. So I recommend emptying the screws and the screw fittings into a bowl or something so you can kind of keep them all together. So they also give you an Allen key so you can attach the screws to the screw fittings. You can also use a 2.5 millimeter hex socket instead of the Allen wrench. Definitely gonna wanna follow these instructions, these step-by-step -step assembly instructions. I've also got a few tips here as well to help you through the installation. So the first order of business is to remove the protective blue film from both sides of every single panel with the exception of the base. I would leave the protective film on the bottom part of the base and just remove the top part. But for the sides and the top, we're gonna have to go ahead and remove all of the blue plastic film. So we'll quickly go ahead and do that. So for the base, like I said, one side is good enough to remove. That way you can keep the other side pristine in case this side gets scratched up, you could always flip it over and kind of start over again. So in comparing the Mark I base to the Mark II base, you can tell that the Mark I base actually has a bigger footprint. So this is gonna take up less space, at least on a tabletop, but it will take up a little bit more space vertically for obvious reasons. So here's a quick tutorial on how to install the screw fittings. So you want to take the screw fittings and insert them this way into the slot. Just kind of push in a little bit and then you turn it so that the... Perfect. So just go ahead and install the screw fittings in each of these slots on every single panel. There's quite a few of them. So we'll go ahead and take care of that. 
So the larger panels typically have a slight bow in them in one direction. And the way you determine that is by holding it at both ends here and then flipping it over and making a comparison on how much deflection you have. Now you can definitely tell that this is more deflection here than it is on this side. So what you do here is this is going to be the inside of the case and this is going to be the outside of the case. So for the top panel it's the same thing. You just have to look at it from both sides. There's definitely more of a bow here than there is this way. So I'm going to put the panel not this way but this way on top okay because that has less bow in it okay you can also mark the side with the less bow since that'll be on the outside you can mark that with some tape you can also do the same thing with the side panels as well so I'm just using some blue tape here go ahead and mark the side that I'm going to be positioning on the outside of the case. That makes it just a little bit easier when you get to the assembly of this. So just like I did in my other videos, I do like to use something to support the case as you're assembling it. That just makes things a little bit easier. They don't mention this in the instructions, but this is just something I figured out having done a couple of these already. So there is a top and a bottom side of these side pieces here. So the bottom side has these sections here that fit into the base section at the bottom. Just kind of fit those in like that. And so the same thing applies to the side piece. Just make sure that you have the proper side facing outward on this. Should fit in like that. Next we're going to go ahead and screw these pieces together here and get our first corner going. For each of these screw fittings you're going to want to line them up with each of the screw holes on the opposing panel. Get your screw and just go ahead and insert those. You can kind of tighten those by hand at first if you want just to get them started. And you can come in with either your Allen wrench or if in this case I'm using a 2.5 millimeter hex. We'll just go ahead and tighten that up. Don't tighten it too much if you're using an electric screwdriver. Just a little bit ought to do it. There you go. And just go ahead and repeat the process for all these screws. There's a total of 20 screws that you're going to have to be inserted. So go ahead and take care of that on each side. So just flip it around and repeat the process on the other side. Just be careful, this thing is really, really big and a little wobbly like this, so. Make sure it doesn't come off the track here on the base side. There we go. We'll go ahead and position the next side piece here. So we'll go ahead and fit this on. There we go. So bring your side panel over and position it on the right side. If you have it marked, go ahead and place it with the marked side facing out and then sort of align these tabs together here and let's go ahead and attach that. So this is turning out to be one hell of a big case. <laughs> so let's just turn this over and do the last side here. Again, you have to be very careful. It's a very wobbly. Let's go ahead and do that. So now that you have all of the sides in place and screwed in, it's time to put the top on. So 
If you've marked your side, you want that side to be on the outside like this. So all you gotta do is just sort of lay it on top here and make sure all of the slots are lined up before you start screwing these fittings in. Make sure your fittings are aligned as well. So we are officially done with the assembly. This thing is a beast. This thing is big. So the next step is go ahead and clean it. Then we'll add the model. So I would take a microfiber towel and wipe off any fingerprints that may have gotten on here, both on the inside as well as the outside. Also take some glass cleaner if you want and go ahead and spray some of the more problem areas here. Let's go ahead and very carefully move the model over onto the base here. Now, those of you who've got the Mark II know all about this stand. You gotta be very careful when you're moving it. I've got it plugged in, so I'm gonna go ahead and unplug it. And then we'll go ahead and locate the whole thing very carefully now. Just right on top of the base. Being careful not to scratch the base when you're doing it. And there you go. So when you center this, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the ends of the Mark II are not crossing over the base. So if that's the case, just move it over slightly. It's actually pretty slick, so you can move it over pretty easily along the base here. Or over here that we can utilize. That looks nice and centered right there. There we go. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and this monster case <laughs> and very carefully place it over the model. This is going to be fun. And let's just go ahead and do it like this. There we go. Yeah, there it is. Line up slots again. There we go. Man, that looks crazy. <laughs> yes, that is nuts. So unfortunately you cannot display the Mark II with the doors up on this display case. I thought they were going to do that. I was only able to get one of the doors up, which might be good enough for some of you because if you're gonna display a figure in there, it'll be easier to see them, but you cannot get two doors up. There's just not enough room here. I did try to get it going, but the door just closed on me. I would say that's sort of some points off for the case because, you know, it, it would help if we could display the car with the doors up a little bit. That would require the height to be a bit more, and maybe that was sort of a judgment call on their part. And here we are with the lights on, looks pretty cool. You can kind of see the under body LEDs lighting up down there, so that's pretty cool. And here we are in full darkness. And I gotta admit, it does look pretty nice here. So you can really see those, and I keep pointing it out, but those LEDs there down below, those really stand out, so that looks pretty awesome. All right, so fast forward a few days later and I was able to display the time machine level in the display case. So just like I mentioned in the Introduction, if you're interested in this, go ahead and check out my video on what I did to non-invasively modify the display base there. You can kind of see what's going on there. But this looks really awesome. I'm actually really happy that I was able to find a way to display the time machine level like this as opposed to tilted. That was something that I never really quite liked. Here you go. Let me know what you guys think. Drop a comment down below. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop those down in the comments as well. And once again, thanks for watching.